Suppose we have a complex number z1 with coordinates x1 and y1. Or in algebraic form, x1 plus i y1. And complex number z2 with coordinates x2 and y2. Or in algebraic form, x2 plus i y2. Let's grab these radius vectors on our plane. Suppose here we have z1, here we have z2, and now using parallelogram rule we can add these two vectors. So we form a parallelogram, and its diagonal will be the sum of these two vectors. Let's name it z3. So z3 We'll have coordinates x1 plus x2 and y1 plus y2. Or in algebraic form, x1 plus x2 plus i, y1 plus y2. Now we know that a complex number may be represented as a point or a radius vector on a plane. And up to now, we only used rectangular coordinates. But it's not our only option. <clears throat> coordinates are about locating something in space, or in our case, about locating a point on a plane. And it's up to us how to do that. Say we can locate a point on a plane, Knowing its distance from the origin, and the angle between this radius vector and the x-axis counted counterclockwise. Why counterclockwise? Because that's how it was agreed. There's nothing special or particular about this direction. So knowing these two parameters, r and phi. We can always and uniquely locate a point on a coordinate plane. This way of showing points on the plane is called polar coordinates. Polar coordinates can be derived from rectangular. Let's see. Here we have a right angled triangle with the sides x and y. Due to a Pythagorean theorem, r is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. Tangent of phi is equal to y over x. Therefore, phi is equal to inverse tangent of y over x. Like we looked complex numbers with points on the plane through rectangular coordinates, we can do so through polar coordinates as well. So a complex number may be given as a pair of two coordinates, r and phi, where r is the absolute value of this complex number, or the distance from this point to the origin, found as follows, square root of x squared plus y squared, where x is the real part of that, and y is imaginary part of z. And the angular coordinate phi is also known as the argument of a complex number. Due to some peculiarities of an inverse tangent function, the expression for argument of z may change depending on location of a point on the coordinate plane. So, for the first and fourth quarters, we have inverse tangent of phi, uh, sorry, of y over x. That's the case when x is greater than zero. So, 
3 is equal to inverse tangent of y over x for x being greater than 0. Then for the second quarter, we have inverse tangent of y over x plus pi. That's when x is less than 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0. Then there are special cases, like argument of z equals pi over 2 when x is equal to 0 and y is greater to 0 than 0. That's the case. Pi over 2 for x equal to 0 and y greater than 0. Negative pi over 2 for x equal to 0 and y less than 0. That's the case. And then finally, argument of a complex number is indeterminate for x and y being equal to 0. or a radius vector on a complex plane through rectangular or polar coordinates. It means that if we're given a complex number, say z for 3, it means that we should first of all clarify whether it is a rectangular or polar coordinate representation, because it makes much of a difference. Consider this. rectangular coordinates. It means that 4 is the real part of z and 3 is the imaginary part of z, and therefore z is found right here. Let's denote it as z rectangular. But if we were told that 4 and 3 are polar coordinates, it would have meant that 4 is the distance from z to the origin, and 3 is the value of an angle between this radius vector and the x-axis given in radians. So let's find this point. Here we have the angle approximately of 3 radians, a little less than pi. Located in two completely different places. However, polar coordinates. 
coordinates can be derived through rectangular coordinates and vice versa using formulas we discussed in this video. And that's pretty much all about complex numbers geometric representation.